헤일 블루 다트 칼 세이건 A Vision of the Human Future in Space Chapter 1 You are here The spacecraft was a long way from home beyond orbit of the outermost planet and high above the ecliptic plane which is an imaginary flat surface that we can think of as something like a racetrack in which the orbit of the planet are mainly confined. The ship was speeding away from the sun at 40,000 miles per hour, but in early February of 1990, it was overtaken by an urgent message from us. Obediently, it turned its camera back toward the now distant planet. Slowly, the scan platform from one spot in the sky to another. It snapped 60 pictures and stored them in digital form on its tape recorder. Then, slowly, in March, April, and May, it radioed the data back to us. Each image was composed of 640,000 individual picture element pixels, like the dot in a newspaper wire photo or a point list painting. The spacecraft was 3.7 billion miles away from us, so far away that it, looked, it took each pixel five half hours traveling at the speed of light to reach us. The pictures might have been returned earlier, but the big radio telescope in California, Spain, and Australia that received this whispers from the edge of the solar system had responsibility to other ships that fly the sea of space, among them Magellan bound for Venus and Galileo on its tortoise passage to Jupiter. Voyager 1 was so high above the ecliptic plane because in 1981 it had made a close pass by Titan, the giant moon of Satan. Its sister ship Voyager 2 was dispatched on a different trajectory within the ecliptic plane and so she was able to perform her celebrated exploration of Uranus and Neptune. The two Voyager robots have explored four planets and nearly 60 moons. They are triumphed of human engineering and one of the glories of the American space program. They will be the history books when much else about our time is forgotten. The Voyagers were guaranteed to work only until the Satan encounter. I thought it might be a good idea just after Satan to have them take one last gallance homeward. From Satan, I knew the Earth would appear too small for Voyager to make out any detail. Our planet would be just a point of light, a lonely pixel, hardly distinguishable from the many other points of light Voyager could see. Nearby planet and far off suns. But precisely because of the obscurity of our world thus revealed, such a picture might be worth having. Mariners have painstakingly mapped the coastlines of the continents. Geographers have translated these findings into charts and globes. Photographs of tiny patches of the earth had been obtained first by balloon and aircraft, then by rocket in brief ballistic flight, and the last by orbiting spacecraft, giving a perspective like the one you achieve by positioning your eyeball about an inch above a large globe. While almost everyone is taught that the Earth is a sphere, it all of us somehow glued to it by gravity. The reality of our circumstance did not really begin to think in until the famous frame-filling Apollo photograph of the whole Earth, the one taken by the Apollo 17 asteroids, 
on the last journey of human to the moon. It has become a kind of icon of our age. There's Antarctica at what American and Europeans so readily regard as the bottom, and then all of America, Africa, stretch up above it. You can see Ethiopia, Tanzania, and Kenya, where the earliest human lived. At top right are Saudi Arabia and what Europeans call the Near East. Just barely peeking out at the top is the Mediterranean Sea, around which so much of our global civilization emerged. You can make out the blue of the ocean, the yellow red of the Sahara, and the Arabian desert the brown green of forest and grassland. And yet there is no sign of human in this picture, not our reworking of the earth's surface, not our machines, not ourselves. You are too small and our spacecraft is too feeble to be seen by your spacecraft between the earth and the moon. From this vantage point, our obsession with nationalism is nowhere in evidence. The Apollo picture of the whole Earth conveyed to multitudes something well known to astronomers. On the scale of the world, to say nothing of stars or galaxies, humans are inconsequential. A thin film of life on an obscure and a solitary lump of rock and metal. It seemed to be that another picture of the Earth, this one taken from a hundred thousand times farther, farther away, might help in the continuing process of revealing to ourselves our true circumstance and condition. It had been well understood by the science and philosopher of classical antiquity that the Earth was a mere point in a vast, encompassing cosmos. But no one have ever seen it as such. Here was our first chance, and perhaps also our last four decades to come. Okay.